First of all, I'd like to thank the committee of this uh, meeting to invite me to address this uh, conference today. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, hormonal modulation and anti-aging medicine. I believe that anti-aging medicine is the medicine of present and the future. Why is that? Because we are in the era of prevention. And uh, hormonal modulation is very important to balance physical, mental, and emotional status. I believe that hormonal modulation is a pillar of uh, anti-aging medicine. We are living longer, and life expectancy requires hormonal modulation uh, therapy. Why is that? Because we're looking for living longer and uh, with a good quality of life. In the hormonal modulation, we do hormonal balance. Hormonal act synergistically, one uh, affect the other's function, the production, the response, and the cell receptor sensitivity. And my experience with the anti-aging medicine it started in 1995 when I first attended to A4N meeting in a resort in Las Vegas, and I really found myself. As an endocrinologist, I took my post-graduation course uh, 42 years ago. I'm 68 years old this year. And uh, I really found myself because I always had uh, an approach of pre prevention in my practice. And um, I thank Dr. Klatz and Dr. Goldman to start this wonderful uh, association. What we do when we um, prescribe a hormonal modulation? We correct the hormonal deficiency and uh, we correct the hormonal overproduction. Aging process is uh, associated with uh, a lack or drop of many hormones in our system, like sexual hormones, DHEA, growth hormone, uh, thyroid hormones, and melatonin. But it's also associated with an increase of some of them, like insulin, cortisol, and the PTH. Endocrine system. It works like a big orchestra, as mentioned Dr. Klatz in his first book. And uh, also deficiency and overproduction of hormones, they're going to induce diseases associated uh, in the aging process. So we're going to speak first about the human growth hormone. It's basically anabolic proteic, so induces cells multiplication. And the, the benefits of use of this hormone in the elderly are based in the sharp decline of growth hormone uh, in the old age. Uh, growth hormone restores muscle mass, strength, and in adults with deficiency, it accelerates the healing of uh, surgical wounds, what used in England many years ago in the early 90s. Uh, it's very important for the immune system, and uh, it was used before uh, to prevent and reverse cachexia in HIV patients. The secretion growth hormone is done in pulse, is a single chain of amino acids, has no glycogen in its molecule, and uh, uh, values range from, from undetectable until 40 micrograms per deciliter. And the secretion is affected by food. Some factors increase growth hormone production, like uh, somatotropin, is the GHRH uh, hormone produced in a hypothalamus, hypoglycemia, amino acids, and acute stress. And other factors, they decrease the growth hormone production, like IGFs, uh, somatomedin. It has a negative feedback with uh, uh, the level of growth hormone. Hyperglycemia, uh, chronic stress, it's very important. And it drops in the aging process. 
how we evaluate uh, growth hormone deficiency in, uh, in, in the aging process through uh, IGFs. IGF means insulin growth factors. It mediates growth hormone action. And uh, it's a polypeptide produced in most of tissues, uh, especially liver. And we can find free, uh, free molecule or linked to a protein called IGF-BP that goes from one to five, and the most important is IGF-BP3. So IGF, especially IGF-1, mediates the physiological actions of a growth hormone, and uh, the fraction linked to a protein modulates the actions of of IGF in the target cells and also changes the bioavailability of IGF to the tissues. So how we check IGF, how we check a growth hormone in adults with efficiency? Uh, through a measure of uh, IGF. So IGF reflects the production of growth hormone in the last 24 hours. When you suspect uh, in a younger uh, adults of uh, some kind of disease like a tumor or in children to be sure that the, this um, uh, child has a deficiency of a growth hormone, we do dynamic tests with uh, insulin, propanolol, glucagon, etc. And we, we test uh, growth hormone. But in adults, uh, we test just IGF. I do IGF-1 and IGF-BP3. And I think, IG, depending on the, the, the age, IGF should be between 200 and 250. Administration of growth, growth hormone should be parenteral because it's a single chain of amino acids if we swallow, we're going to digest and lose uh, its um, metabolic action. And the first evidence of use of beneficial growth hormone in adults with, with uh, deficiency goes back to 1962. So it's very old. <laughs> 